This is one of those storylines that is so wild that you are forced to go with, you literally just can't make this stuff up. You're like, what happened? Bombing in a homeless encampment 200 feet away from the biggest trauma center in all of the Pacific Northwest, Harborview Medical Center, had a bombing and its retribution for some kind of drug deal gone sideways. And it's on I-5. I joked last week about a newscaster. I was watching the traffic and the newscaster on local Fox affiliate was like, yeah, I, I think, I think that's smoke from a fire in an encampment. No, 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 no. It was an explosion, a premeditated planned explosion. Well, let, let, you know what? Let's get into it. Here we go. It's so bad. So bad. So bad. How, how, how does this stuff even happen? All right. So here's a new story that I saw last, uh, I think it came, yeah, it came out last Monday. Explosion at large encampment near Seattle Hospital may have been a target attack. So I saw the story and I thought, okay, let's let that develop a little bit further and, and just see if that was a targeted attack. I want to know about it. Well, it sounds like it is. And at this time, I also saw where they, Jeremy Harris had indicated that there was security cameras by people in the encampment. It's like, that's weird. That's weird. So, so this happened last week. And then now we've got the story, multiple explosive devices. It happened exactly a week ago. Today's Thursday. It happened previous Friday. Multiple explosive devices used in bombing at encampment outside Seattle hospital. Let's just, let's just look, watch the footage for one second. It's, it's pretty wild. Yeah, that's right. I just got a copy of the initial police report. It details a drug turf war involving shootings and a bombing right outside of Harborview Medical Center that nearly killed 20 people who were inside of a tent smoking fentanyl. All of this is happening <laughs> on state property. But <laughs> what? Seriously, what? This is how far this has gotten out of control. Yeah, it was a planned bombing of 20 people. What are 20 people doing smoking fentanyl in one tent? Well, it's clearly the hangout, you know, fentanyl smoking area, but they almost got, I mean, what if those 20 people had been blown up? You want to talk about some worldwide news? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, or does the city of Seattle try and just sweep that under the rug? Ah, nothing to see here. Got 18 people dead, two in serious condition. You know, they're, they're going to be okay, but we are going to start cleaning out that homeless encampment. <laughs> I mean, you would hope. But even then, you get 18 people killed in a homeless encampment that were fentanyl, you know, homeless people. Our, our governor would say, well, yeah, it's going to take some time. We got to have housing for all of those folks that are looking for housing. I mean, it's, this is still going to take some time because invariably we have these encampments where murders have taken place and what happens? You got it. Nothing. The state nor the city seem to have any plan to deal with it. Explosions rocked through the encampment in the early morning hours last Friday. Today, a police report says this bombing came after a violent overthrow of a drug empire operating on state property on I-5, directly outside Seattle's largest hospital, Harborview Medical Center. The a drug operation operating 200 feet from the hospital on I-5, Interstate 5. I mean, this is just some crazy, crazy stuff. The report says multiple explosive devices were used to blow up a fentanyl tent where there were 20 customers inside. One of those users found a device before it went off and everyone inside the tent scattered right before the explosion. The police report says witnesses said the bombing may have been in retaliation for a recent shooting and possibly connected to the theft of $80,000 in fentanyl. It's a bad cycle. And I think that if it's allowed to continue, it's, it's, it's going to continue to get worse. Jim Feuda from Crime Stoppers of Puget Sound says encampments like this are havens for drug trafficking and things here can escalate quickly into violence. I like to use it as kind of a Lord of the Flies 
uh, um, scenario where there's their own hierarchy infrastructure that, that ends up in these camps. If you thought a bombing at a homeless camp on state property outside the city's main trauma hospital would garner quick action by the city and the state, think again. Despite signs saying this encampment can legally be removed immediately without warning, the city has offered no plan in response to the bombings. The state has also been equally quiet, just saying they are working with partners to deal with the encampment, which is in an area of state property that is known for drug trafficking, with police finding guns, cash, and drugs in encampments. I think that they, they need to be clean and the people responsible need to be held accountable. No arrests have been made in this case, but one of the suspects listed in that police report does have a history of an arson conviction. We've been pushing the city because there is a sign at the entrance to this encampment that says anything put in there can be removed immediately with no notice given. We are asking the city and the state why they are not doing it. We'll keep you posted. That's just a wild story. I don't care what you say. That's just a wild story. Here's those flames. I mean, those are some big flames, right? Let's take a little peek and see through. All right, you've got a full on operation going on here, right? I mean, you've got a structure in, it's my understanding that they, uh, they, they found the bomb and they picked up probably tarp that was one end of the, uh, uh, one end of the structure and they picked that up and ran out that section before the tent blew up because of explosive devices. I mean, th this is some real just, crazy town stuff, right? Here you've got I-5 closed off because yeah. So I talk about this fair area fairly often. I will be driving north on I-5 and it's off to the right where Harborview is. Let me show you here on the map. Okay. So here's Harborview. Here is that area out in front where the bombing happened. Here is um, Pike Place Market. So this is literally in downtown Seattle. I mean, it's urban. It is dense. You have bombs go off, people are going to notice, right? It's, it's, it's not going to go unseen. It's not like we're 50 miles out on some 20 acre parcel, you know, system of bunkers underground. This is in downtown Seattle and you've got this kind of nonsense going on. Okay. So there's kind of the warnings. So, all right. So here the, the red, uh, section is the piece of land wedged in between I five and, you know, all the other land to the east, not owned by the State Department of Transportation. This is DOT land, and it can be cleared at any given point in time. This is a, it, it's also super steep. You can see the elevation going up. It goes up very steeply from the freeway up to the east, and then kind of terraces off, and then you've got Harbor View. Now, the significance of Harbor View is that if you suffer a massive injury, you know, anywhere in the Pacific Northwest and you are a hair away from, you know, dying and you need emergency medical trauma help, like now you get airlifted to Harbor View. So the fact that you had 20 people in a tent that were almost bombed to death is just, you know, it, it's kind of mind blowing. But then again, this is Seattle. So, you know, just let the people live in their tents. They'll be fine. And they're just down on their luck. They're okay. I mean, they, they wouldn't do anything weird in there. Would they? This is what they're doing. And, and so many people want to say, ah, no, they're just down on their luck. They just need another three to $500 and they'll get back on their feet and they'll get going again. Is that before or after they bomb a tent filled with 20 people? You, you know, where in that timeline does that happen? Yeah. All right. So then you got, what do you got there? A bunch of, oh, th those are, uh, looks like that is burned up uh, gasoline tanks. I'm going to go with that. Yeah, there's the state sign, no trespassing, uh, Washington D uh, Department of Transportation. So now, now you get an idea where it is. So here's a new update. Crews begin clearing large encampment outside Seattle Hospital following explosion. And it sounds like Mayor Harrell is behind this. This is Washington State Department of Transportation land, but I bet you the city is getting in there and just going. We'll have to kind of see how this goes. I think Mayor Harrell of Seattle is stepping in and possibly stepping over some other entities like, I don't know, WashDOT and State of Washington and King County and 
Yeah, well, it's not King County's land. I think the mayor is just going, we're cleaning this bad boy out. Because, I mean, if, if, if a bombing doesn't get some action, what does? Right. Crews with the city of Seattle began clearing a large homeless encampment located in a wooded area between I-5 and Harbor View on Thursday morning, this morning, less than a week after the encampment exploded in flames. Como News saw Seattle police and firefighters, the city of Seattle. That's interesting. Along with Seattle human services workers and other city crews, working to clear and secure the encampment Thursday morning. Some of the workers were seen dismantling structures inside the encampment. Crews were at the site as early as 9 a.m. That's the city. That's Mayor Harrell going in and just saying, clear it out. Don't care. Clear it out. Because if this were up to our governor, Jay Inslee, well, we, we, I know there was an explosion, but we need to wait to see if we have enough housing for everybody. You know, all the 20 people in smoking fentanyl and paying a price to get into that tent. We need to make sure that we have some housing for them. That's literally what you've got going on here. That's the, that's the struggle that is happening. And that's why, you know, on this WashDOT land, um, typically, we wait for, you know, months and months and months, up to years to get an encampment closed. The Ship Canal Bridge encampment in Seattle was the most recent example of how long it takes for King County Regional Housing Authority to get off their ass and clear something out. Forever. Forever. The explosion and fire at the encampment happened on the morning of July 21st, last Friday, Photos and video from the morning show, uh, tall flames and a large plume of smoke billowing over the Seattle skyline that could be seen for miles. Oh, how proud we are. How proud we are. Hey, is that a forest fire? Nah, that's a bunch of drug addicts smoking fentanyl on the side of the freeway in front of Harbor View. And, you know, it blew up because one of the drug dealers there got bounced out and somebody stole 80K of drugs from him and... So he tried to murder 20 people in a tent with a homemade explosive device. Welcome to Seattle for a day or a lifetime. Imagine that. All on one side. <laughs> Although the encampment was destroyed, destroyed by the fire, it was beginning to be rebuilt within a few days. That's what I had heard. And that new security cameras went up. Like they bomb the, the 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 encampment and then they rebuild. Well, guys, we got to keep on going. I mean, that's some resilience there. Bombing? We don't slow down for that. We got fentanyl to sell. On Monday, Como News crew saw tents, gas cans, and propane tanks that had been brought back into the encampment. A video camera was also seen on a tree with a view of the encampment. That's what caught my eye. It's like, you got video surveillance in there? Yeah, of course you do. You got drug dealers going ham. According to a police report obtained by Como News, the large fire was the result of multiple explosive devices being detonated, possibly in connection to an ongoing battle for control of the drug trade among the homeless. Oh, these aren't just people down on their luck. They're running drugs. Huh. Interesting. Weird. Who knew? Witnesses told investigators the explosion was a targeted attack on a fentanyl tent where 20 customers were inside using drugs, the report says. People who lived in the encampments outside of Harborview previously told Como News there was a tent at the site where drug users could pay admission to go inside and get high. It's the same type of scheme Seattle police investigators found at a nearby encampment that exploded in February. I mean, it's like your own little 7-Eleven for fentanyl, right? I mean, just price of admission. All right, 10 bucks, come in, smoke up, whatever it is. Witnesses stated minutes prior to the explosion, he saw the devices and alerted others inside. Hey, there's a bomb. Witnesses stated everyone inside this tent freaked out and exited by lifting the other side of the structure to escape. Witnesses stated he then attempted to exit south due to hearing gunshots and flashing from the bush to the northeast, but saw another IED south of the structure. So this is an ambush. This is a straight up ambush, isn't it? Blow the tent up, shoot the people coming out, shoot the people that, that survived. But instead, they saw it just a split second early, right? A witness also told the police that he heard someone yelling that the suspect was shooting at them. 
Yeah, this is this is a premeditated deal. So if you think the people in the homeless encampments are just fine and they need a sandwich thrown their way now and then, all right, okay, and you believe in your own little fantasy, but this is literally what you've got going. You cannot make this silliness up. And it's horrific silliness, right? 20 people almost killed? That is not reasonable. Going to go there. It's not reasonable. <laughs> Washington State Department of Transportation traffic camera captured multiple explosions and thick smoke barreling toward the hospital. Seattle Fire Department crews responded to the scene and were able to put the fire out. The scene was then turned over to Seattle police and investigators. According to the report, people who survived the bombing told investigators the former leader of the encampment had recently been replaced. We had an ouster. We had, you know, it, you know, we took a vote, guys, and you're out. You're out of here. You got to go. You got to go. And they returned with a gun to rob those inside the fentanyl tent. Okay. I mean, so, so you've got, you know, you got, you do have a little bit of the Lord of the Flies going on here. A little bit of conflict. Somebody needs to work on their conflict resolution skills and, you know, just de-escalation and bring, bring things down a little bit. You know, maybe just get away from the bombing and, you know, get away from the shooting of people that are trying to escape the bombing in the tent. You know, just really bring things down a notch. We're at here. We need you guys to be down here as far as escalation goes. We just need you to really work on it. While you're in a tent on the side of the freeway wedged in between Major Harborview Medical Center. A witness said the former leader of the camp was known to make explosive devices from plastic buckets. Okay. All right. We know all this. That's the insane part. If I know this and you now know this, ah, the police damn well know this. Everybody knows this, right? And he'd been teaching people in the encampment how to make the improvised explosive devices. All right. All right, guys. Over there, you've got fentanyl smoking. Here we got fentanyl smoking too. All right. Right here. Yeah, we've got bomb uh, construction 101. Stick around, guys. This is going to be good. I, I mean, we've never had one explode in the tent, but yeah, I never say anything. never. I mean, things are, you know, can be pretty exciting around here. Take your hit and then let's, let's get into the bomb making. That's literally what you've got going on. I mean, there's right. <laughs> According to court documents, the suspect also connected to drug trafficking operations in the area of 12th Avenue and South Jackson Street in Seattle. That is the International District. That is the other open air drug market. You've got the main one on 3rd Avenue in downtown Seattle between Pike and Pine. You got the McDonald's on the north end. You got the Amazon building overlooking that little scene. Well, in the International District, those folks are getting hammered. We had Taylor Swift. We had the All Star Game. And people are just not going to restaurants. They're not frequenting restaurants in the International District. And I think it's because of the influence of the 12th Avenue and Jackson Street that impact that is impacting. It's keeping people away. Because do you want to have this kind of nonsense close to where you're eating your whatever, you know, food? Probably not. You're just going to stay away. And I think that's what's happening. So super sad to the, you know, residents of the Chinatown and um, the International District. That sucks. They've got some real issues going on there. Number one, you've got an open air drug market. Second witness corroborated and, and authorities are not shutting it down, right? I mean, the community members have fought hard to, to keep that influence out of the community. And you know what? We're just dumping more and more of this on their lap. A second witness corroborated seeing buckets placed around the serving tent inside the encampment. Another person at the encampment told investigators that there have been conflicts stemming from the theft of 80 grand in fentanyl and a murder. Got a murder in there. How many times does it take for something beyond a murder to get the state's action on this stuff? It's become laughable. I mean, it's literally crazy town. What happened today? Ah, uh, yeah. Somebody set off a couple of bombs in a tent in an encampment where we had a murder not that long ago. Yeah, yeah the encampment's still there, as you do in Seattle. You know, the encampment is within 200 feet from Harborview's main entrance and sits on Washdot property. The state gave the King County Regional Homeless Authority. 
50 million last year to house people who live around freeways. Those funds have established 280 units of housing so far, according to King County Regional Housing Authority. And yet none of them from this encampment went there because they're in a tent smoking fentanyl while bombs are exploding. <laughs> and that is not a Saturday Night Live Live from New York, it's Saturday Night Live. On Monday, Seattle Mayor Bruce Harrell said he was aware of the situation and wanted the state to deal with the encampment on washed out property as soon as possible. I think Bruce Harrell just took the bull by the horns and cleared this bad boy out. I think he's clearing it out. As I'm recording this for you right now, I believe he is sweeping that out. And good for you, Mayor Harrell. I mean, do what you got to do. D don't wait for that. Don't wait for the governor. That guy's working in slow motion time, right? We know that fires in these encampments are totally unacceptable, as are explosive devices. While we're working with the state aggressively to make sure they give us the resources to clean up these areas, Harold said on Monday, does that include the bomb eradication you know, department? What does that look like? Who is that? Who brings in the bomb squad, right? Where? What? department are they from? Is that the state? Is that is that the feds? I don't even know, right? Is that the FBI? I'm looking for that answer from the state as we speak, so I hope they give us an aggressive timeline and one that works for the resources they have. In a statement, Washdot told Como News that it was working with partners to come up with a plan. We're imagining and we're thinking about it to address the encampment outside of Harborview. They started whatever plan they came up with. They started this morning and good, good. I had it. Uh, King County council member Reagan Dunn said he would give the state of Washington an F grade on dealing with homeless encampments on washed up property. Not a D minus, not a passing grade, not a D, not a D plus a straight up F fail. Now, Reagan Dunn um, is, he, you know, he's a conservative dude and he wants this taken care of. He's just like, do whatever you got to do. Make this happen. Make it move away. Because storyline after storyline after storyline are homeless encampments on washed out land because they know it's in this never, never land of, well, we can only get to clearing out that encampment. When we have housing for everybody, otherwise it's going to violate their constitutional rights and the American Civil Liberties Union is going to come down hard on us. <laughs> Clear the encampment out. I don't care if you're playing whack-a-mole, but if you have bombs going off, that's what you do, right? That's what you do. So absolute insanity going on in Seattle. I mean, just, I mean, this, this story goes on, but we've pretty much cleared, you know, we've covered everything. So, I mean, that kind of gives you a little insight. All right. Okay. So here's what's going on in these drug infested encampments. They're, they're, they're straight up sending, you know, selling single servings or whatever, and they can do it in the temp tent. I mean, you want to talk about this is not buried somewhere deep in the hood. This is on Interstate 5. It is literally visible from the freeway. You drive through, you come from South Seattle, you're driving through downtown, you're on your way to Canada. You know, you, you want to go up to Vancouver and you want to do whatever there. This is, you would see, you would look off to the right. This is the encampments that I talk about on the steep terrain. This is steep. It's steep stuff. And so that's some of the reason it won't get swept typically because it's too steep. It's on washed out land. You know, there's all these things that have to happen that clearly are not happening. So it's my understanding. And I have from a very reliable source that Mayor Harrell is doing the clean out right now. Good for you, Mayor Harrell. But, you know, it, it's kind of a whack-a-mole game. So, yeah takes care of this encampment, but do you think they shut down business? Do you think they say, well, Mayor Harrell got to us again. I guess we should just, you know, probably pretty much break up the band and let's go back to our teaching jobs. And, you know, let's, let's give the drugs a little bit of a, let's give them a little bit of a break. And yeah, let's go back to, you know, teaching third grade. And we're just going to, you know, we're going to, we're going to follow the rules for a while. Do you think that happens? Hell no. These people are way outside of the law. That's why they're living in an encampment on steep terrain with 
<laughs> with explosive devices as a means of retaliation for having their drugs stolen and also from being thrown out of the, I mean, literally you got Lord of the Flies going on here, right? You're out. We ousted you. We voted you out. You're, you're off the island. You're no longer part of Survivor. You're, you're no longer naked and afraid. You're just out. Wild stuff. This is Seattle. And this is not unique to just Seattle. It's just a story that we caught. And the you know, so when you hear about things blowing up, oftentimes it's a meth lab or it's a propane tank, but it's not typically a bombing in an encampment on the side. Of, you know, I just want to say in a van down by the river, but you can't because it's not even there. It's not even near a source of water. It's on super steep hill in downtown Seattle. It's wild, wild stuff. As we have developments in this story, I will cover it for you right here on News for Reasonable People, because this is truly one of the most unreasonable news stories coming out of Seattle in a long time. The whole Chop Chaz thing, silliness, ridiculousness. This straight up criminality being allowed to operate under our noses as people commute into downtown Seattle, the major arterial into downtown Seattle. Hey, I'm just going to go into work today. Hey, nice bomb explosion over there. Yeah, I hope they get that cleaned up. All right. Let's, uh, let's see if I can find a parking spot here. All right. Another day, another dollar in Seattle. It's all good. It's all good. Thanks for being here. We'll catch up soon. Bye for now.